What are children and young people's perspectives of their cities? Are their views reflected in the running, planning and design of where we live? How can we more effectively support children and young people? What is happening in cities across Canada? This has been the focus of Growing Up in Cities Canada, an initiative that brought together six agencies across the country from 2003 to 2006 with funding from the Social Development Directorate. The International Institute for Child Rights and Development, based at the University of Victoria, as the lead organization, we have guided a dialogue seeking to learn from and enhance the networks of young people and other actors in the city. Hartwood in Nova Scotia, Environmental Youth Alliance in Vancouver, Redwire in Vancouver as well, all work directly with youth. The Youth Commission in Gatineau is a formal structure based in the city. The Canadian Commission of UNESCO is an international agency. We've all worked together to move forward the agenda of young people. The Growing Up in Cities Canada initiative originates from a planner, Kevin Lynch, who in the 1970s introduced the idea in four cities around the world that children have their own perspectives and need to actively be involved in the design and planning of where they live. Louise Chowler revived these ideas in the mid-90s under the auspices of UNESCO. In eight cities, growing up in cities, involved young people between 10 and 14 years old in evaluating their community, determining priorities for change, and helping implement local initiatives. In an era where greater recognition is made of children's rights, growing up in cities has been a success. It is the growing up in cities approach that gave us a basis to come together in Canada, a framework to build on. It made sense in furthering our implementation of child and youth participation. What have we done? We've created resources and tools. Working with young people requires appropriate tools. Drawing from the international project and the partnering organization's own work, we fine-tuned four research methods. Asset-based mapping provides an open space for young people to define what matters to them in terms of their internal selves and their physical and social environment. Visioning allows young people to imagine their ideal city, shedding light on children's perspectives and visions of a healthy community supportive of young people. Photo framing is about young people walking through the community and taking pictures of the places that they like or dislike the places where they feel safe or unsafe. The Jenga activity focuses on identifying issues of concern to young people, how they perceive their own capacity and the community's capacity to address the issues. The Creative Tool Manual describes these activities in detail. We've also made videos that shed light on young people's creativity. We have told stories such as the parallel experiences of being queer in Vancouver and of being a new immigrant and the significance of peer-to-peer -peer support, the meaning of urbanization for Aboriginal children and youth and the need to redefine their culture in this new setting, the value of skateboarding as a way for young people of connecting physically and socially to their city, an individual activity but also a potential entry point for young people's engagement in their community and understanding of city processes. The planning and design of a cafe for 12 to 17 year olds, a place where they can play music, express themselves, where they feel welcome. We've also increased our understanding. We carried out 30 focus groups where young people commonly spoke about feeling excluded being stereotyped as troublemakers and feeling that their voice was not valued. But we also learned about the significance of connecting young people at the local level, the various supports that can facilitate young people's civic engagement. We designed and distributed a survey 
to understand how municipalities in British Columbia engage children and young people. We found that many municipalities have implemented programs of engagement, but only a little over a half report that their community is doing good or very good in including youth in municipal affairs. In fact, 94% believe that their community could be more child and youth friendly. We've also done case studies on how these different cities have approached youth engagement, whether it be in Vancouver, the third largest city in Canada, with a high population and ethnically extremely diverse, in Gatineau, in Quebec, which is somewhat of a spread out suburb recently amalgamated with a large youth population, in Halifax, in the Maritimes, a city that has both aspects of a city and a rural area, each of these cities has taken their own approach to engaging young people. We've also strengthened and created networks. In fact, networks may be the biggest success of this initiative. When new links have been made, new partnerships established to create a basis for an enabling environment that can sustain the engagement of young people. And finally, we've been advocates. We've attended meetings. We have held local meetings. We've had national public forums to share our learnings, but also invite dialogue amongst municipalities so that cities can learn about the models and approaches adopted by their neighbors, as well as sharing amongst organizations, youth-led ones, or those working with young people. We want to encourage the multiple players to push the boundaries and truly provide a meaningful place for young people. With the growing complexity of cities in the new millennium, we urgently need to continue this work. Children have a right to a voice in matters that concern them, as stated in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, Article 12, but also because we have learned that young people are experts on their local environment and a powerful resource for social change. Providing for the civic engagement of young people is about nurturing the roots of our cities, of our society.